yes, human rights are threatened, but there is a particular burden that is put onto uh, the young generation and the generation to come respect to what will be the future effects of climate change upon them. And the fact that they will also uh, have to assume major uh, responsibilities and uh, actions that will be more and more difficult to take to tackle climate change. The long we wait to take drastic action to face climate change, the more bigger the burden will be for the future generation. So I am Gian Paolo Mascaro, uh, and this is Rethinking Climate, a youth led association contributing to the environmental communication through research, articles, and interviews. Today, we have the pleasure uh, to have here uh, Lucy Gray, who is a member of the Italian environmental organization ASUD, where she works as project manager, researcher, and trainer. Hello, Lucy. Hi. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to talk about uh, our activities and actions. Lucia, please uh, tell us about uh, ASUD, your organization, what do you do during your work? Yes, uh, uh, the organization ASUD was created in 2003. Uh, it was uh, built by Italian activists uh, that were in Latin America uh, around that time. Uh, in a moment where there were many uh, environmental conflicts and uh, bottom-up struggles in Latin America and processes of, of democratic participation from the bottom-up that were developing. So it was a very interesting um, moment in particular where uh, community participation were directly um, relating to environmental issues. Um, and this is also how uh, environmental conflicts became kind of a, of a central perspective of our work. Uh, by environmental conflicts, we intend uh, social conflicts that are related um, to environmental issues. So the management uh, of uh, natural resources uh, rather than the projects uh, that are impacting the environment and the health of people. Um, so it was um, the founders of the organization found very important to bring back such kind of experiences uh, and uh, perspective uh, in, in, in Italy and uh, the organization. So start working uh, in particular in the field of international cooperation, supporting local communities that were impacted by uh, development and production projects. Um, in the years, our organization developed itself with many more activities and uh, we got uh, all the time more activities that were looking and being implemented in Italy. Um, we created in 2007 a documentation center on environmental conflicts, so developing our research work, looking both at the global south and the global north, uh, and we are now uh, promoting a, a map, an atlas of environmental conflicts uh, in, in Italy. And uh, we have many more activities. The, the main field of activities that our organization is promoting uh, is in the field of communication, uh, of research, uh, also of education and training, of course, and uh, of advocacy. And our objective is to, um, in particular, to follow, to narrate, uh, to participate uh, to national coordination processes there is among the environment and climate movements, but also looking at uh, international arenas and being present, uh, for example, the COPs, uh, bringing into Italy what are the discussion, both uh, at uh, the governance level, but also among social movement, movements in the world. Um, we have many research and divulgation activities uh, on the climate field, in particular that regards uh, international agreements, but also national and climate related policies. And this is also a way for us to address uh, the lack of ambitious uh, climate action there is around the world. Thank you very much, very exhaustive. And it's great that you cover so many areas from all these different uh, viewpoints, perspectives. It's, it's a very full packet. Um, uh, action and 
um, along this uh, spectrum of initiatives that you have been uh, carrying out as an organization, would you tell us uh, more about uh, this Giudizio Universale uh, translated in English final judgment uh, campaign? Uh, what is it about? Uh, who is supporting you? Sure, sure. Um, as an organization, uh, looking in particular to the, 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 uh, the impacts on local communities, but also so looking at supporting uh, communities that are mobilized to defend, their, to defend their right and to defend the environment, we always had interest in following legal cases that were related um, to environmental justice and then to climate justice. Um, and also that how they can bring, uh, they have a huge potential to advance environmental struggles and to protect uh, communities of life. So um, in the framework of, of climate litigation, we have seen a development around the world uh, many cases developing themselves in the in the last 10 years and some groundbreaking cases no? as it was the case of the climate litigation that has been promoted by Urgenda Foundation uh, with victories in courts uh, between 2015 and 2019. Um, we have been cooperating uh, for years with various lawyers, uh, would it be national lawyers or lawyers working abroad, and this led us to look at the potential of climate litigation uh, as a way to address in our country the lack of uh, ambition that the state had in the field of climate policies. And this is how we started evaluating which could be uh, legal strategies in Italy. Um, as I said, as we are working in tight contact with environmental movements and, and grassroots, uh, it was important for us to design uh, an action that will be, of course, not just a legal action, but that could be a campaign and that could engage uh, a broad number of uh, formal and informal groups that are, that are uh, fighting in Italy to promote environmental and climate justice. Um, so the, that's how the campaign Giudizio Universale was born uh, in order to represent the many souls that are engaged in our country to promote climate justice. Um, we launched the campaign in 2019, so it was a moment where we were still developing the legal action, so we were still working at the level of research, uh, scientific research and, and legal development. Um, and the idea was to launch the campaign to start promoting the idea of this legal action uh, to the general public, but in particular uh, to all uh, the activists and the grassroots that were uh, around the country. And this uh, led us to have now a campaign that is participated by over 100 uh, grassroots and an organization that are uh, supporting the campaign, that are participating into the campaign. And sometimes they cannot be actually part of the legal action because they might not have uh, a legal statute or something like that. So the campaign is also a way to have everyone uh, on board into a, a joint action towards climate justice in Italy. Would you delve deeper into the legal instruments which are representing the, the base, the jurisprudential base for, uh, for your legal action? What are... Uh, uh, you're basing it uh, on when it comes to, to claiming uh, a violation uh, of the state of the government. Okay, so let, let's me uh, first a bit of, of introduction also of who are the, the plaintiffs. Uh, so this is this is a, a climate litigation. It has been. Um, uh, deposited to the civil court of Rome, so it's a civil action, um, participated by 203 plaintiffs, that include uh, 162 adults, 70 minors that are represented in court by, by their parents, and 24 uh, association, national association, that are committed to environmental justice and, and human rights. Uh, this is the first uh, of its kind in Italy. There is no, uh, there has been no climate litigation before, so it is the first climate litigation in the country. And um, the general aim of this lawsuit is to sue the state for climate inaction, so uh, for its insufficient commitment to promote uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction 
protection policies that results as a violation of numerous fundamental rights that are recognized by the Italian state. Um, so the baseline of our argumentation is that the state has a duty to protect uh, the people from climate change. So this is the, the first, first ground. There is two main assumptions to our legal strategies. Uh, first is that uh, the Italian state has been aware for a very long time of the climate emergency and what it implies for the future. Uh, and nonetheless, nonetheless, nevertheless, its action, its climate action have been insufficient so far. So if it has known for a very long time that uh, climate change were coming and were increasing and were threatening the rights of the people, its uh, action, its policies has not been sufficient to address the level of danger that climate change were uh, and are representing. Um, our litigation, as uh, most uh, other strategic climate litigation or and also climate litigation that addresses are based on human rights, uh, combine different references from international agreements up to regional uh, human rights convention and laws, as well as national laws. So in the specific, of course, uh, our action um, looked at uh, the United Nations Framework Convention of Human Rights, of course. It uses uh, a very a groundbreaking international agreement that has led to the development of many climate litigation around the world, which is the, the Paris Agreement uh, signed in 2015. It uses um, many convention and laws also from the European ground. So uh, first of all, the European Convention on Human Rights, and in particular, Article 2 that refers to the right to life and Article 8 that refers to the respect for private and family life, uh, which has also a ground that is shared with many climate litigation in Europe. It also refers to Article 191 from the Treaty on the Functioning of the European U Union. Uh, this article sets what are the objective of um, European environmental policies that are supposed to preserve, to protect and to improve the quality of the environment. Um, and we also refer to other European regulation, for example, the regulation number 2018 uh, 1999 that uh, regards the aim uh, to ensure that the energy union achieve its objective and uh, its targets in particular regarding the policy framework on climate change and energy looking at 2030 and also the implementation of the Paris Agreement. Um, if we look at the national level, we are using, and I will not list them, list them all because we get into a very technical uh, level, but uh, we use, of course, the Italian constitution. Here again, uh, using two specific articles, Article 2 of the constitution that regards the protection of human rights and Article 32 uh, that refers to the right to health. So the fact that people need to have a, a, good, a good health and live in conditions that guarantee their health. And we use many other national sources and case-based uh, precedents that help uh, uh, argumentate our cases from uh, the legal perspective. The argumentation of our case uh, also include uh, reference to various aspects. An important aspect uh, is the Italian vulnerability to climate change effects. Uh, and the fact that as Italy is a, is a country that is particularly vulnerable to climate change effects, it needs to be protected in particular. Uh, of course, there is also a long uh, argumentation and uh, attachment to our demands that regard the lack of action that the state has been uh, accumulating in the years and the lack of ambition of its policies, uh, of its target of emission reduction, for example, only uses what the European Union asks us to do, but never actually uh, tackle from a national perspective, setting a national base calculated objective of emission reduction, so on and so forth. Um, and we are looking also in the argument, argumentation to many uh, specific rights. And it's very interesting uh, that in the recent years, many cases as our cases also are looking to intergenerational equity. So looking at the facts that, yes, human rights are threatened, but there is a particular burden that is put onto uh, the young generation and the generation to come respect to what will be the future effects of climate change upon them. And the fact that they will also 
uh, have to assume major uh, responsibilities and uh, actions that will be more and more difficult to take to tackle climate change. The long we wait to take drastic action to face climate change, the more bigger the burden will be for the future generation. So this is also a, an argumentation baseline of our, of our cases. Um, very briefly, at one point we are right now in our legal uh, action, as I said before, we deposited our case, uh, our cement, in June uh, 2021. We had the first hearing of the case in December 2021. Uh, this first hearing was a, a first step, very, let's say, simple, but it instead uh, we have our case have been recognized it has been recognized as admissible there has been so far no questioning from the judge regarding the admissibility of her case so we are continuing on with the case we are waiting uh, for next june to have our next hearing our second hearing in which the legal procedure will get into the content of the argumentation that we brought to the court and also the revision of the defense that the state have been presenting regarding uh, the demands that we are raising and uh, the question that we are raising regarding their their duty and we will follow for sure all the outcomes the next steps of the action and it's it's very interesting that you mentioned the so many legal instruments of both from an international and national perspective it means it clarifies that the legal pathways are there uh, so it's actually possible to do uh, something uh, more than uh, mere advocacy it's possible to urge uh, the government to do something more, but after all, it's always up to people to to trigger this instrument. So it's it's very important that someone does it. So thanks again for for this initiative, and just eventually, in light of the um, increasing, ever growing number of climate lit litigation, uh, what's the goal? that you eventually uh, are, are planned to, to achieve what are your intentions? Uh, there, there are many many goals uh, behind such uh, such action but to state three main goals I believe are, are core to this action is uh, first to support a, an action that could uh, promote and, and carry on uh, action that is uh, brought forward by the national climate movement. So to have a, a concrete tool using the legal sphere to support uh, the demands for climate justice that exist in our country. Um, of course, a second uh, important goal is to increase the visibility and, and contribute to the debate there is in our country around climate justice. Um, the level of information, in particular the level of mainstream information in Italy regarding climate change has increased, yes, but it's still low and it excludes many aspects that are, uh, let's say, the more difficult aspect to be dealt with. An example uh, of all, uh, if we look at our legal action, is that it allows us to speak about the duty of the state. So what the state is supposed to do in, in climate change and, and more than anything, uh, what the state is actually doing, so also to speak about the lack of action, the fact that the policies that are implemented so far have been completely insufficient and they are not respecting uh, the urgency of action that we uh, would need uh, on the contrary. So uh, doing a campaign like Giudizio Universale and, uh, and uh, supporting a legal action of, of this kind is also a way to bring into the public debate um, issues that are not dealt with and should be central in the public discussion regarding facing climate change. And finally, uh, the, the third main goal, which is definitely a goal that is shared by uh, all uh, the climate litigation, uh, in particular climate litigation that uh, are called strategic climate litigation. So climate litigation that are uh, targeting to have an effect on the insufficiencies of uh, measure, in particular of uh, emission uh, reduction uh, targets, is to pressure is to pressure over the state uh, of the government governments that of course changes in, in time, but uh, to pressure over our decision maker, our policy maker, so that they increase the ambition of 
the climate policies in our country. Um, so this is uh, why part of our demands uh, actually regards the target that each Italy should have uh, regarding its emission reduction target toward uh, 2030, for example. Um, we have been working, we had a chance to be able to work with uh, climate analytics. Climate analytics is an independent research uh, center uh, that is part of the Climate Action Tracker um, database. They are analyzing at international level how the policies that uh, states implement actually uh, will lead to respect or not the Paris Agreement. Um, so they are experts of evaluating how the policies are adequate to face climate change and they develop a report for Italy that calculated our national carbon budget, which doesn't exist, but has not been calculated by um, the institution or by uh, research entities related to the institution. And it uh, established also a goal of reduction that is based on the application of the principle of equity and the principle of uh, common uh, but differentiated responsibilities among states. So they took into account how much Italy is historically responsible in terms of greenhouse gas emission, how much it is still responsible for it, and uh, how much it has the capacity, both in uh, the financial aspects and in the technological aspects, to face climate change. And on the basis of this, using methodologies that are uh, both used at the IPCC, but also developed uh, more generally into the, the international uh, academic arena, they calculated a percentage of reduction that Italy should uh, implement by 2030 in order to respect those principles and to respect the Paris Agreement. And the result is quite striking because they calculated that to respect the Paris Agreement and those principles, Italy should uh, reduce its emission by 92% by 2030. So it's a very, very high result that shows how much responsibility uh, our states have. And we hope that through uh, this legal action, we can start talking about those things, even if they are complicated, even if it's difficult to talk about that, but there's no more time to lose. And we hope also that the legal action would help to push and make um, policy action be more quick and not carry on waiting to take drastic measure that needs to be taken at this point. Your explanation is very clear that there is so much on the plate. There are so many objectives at stakes and each of them is very, very important. So uh, fingers crossed for, for the future, but I'm sure that it's, it's going to be even, even better in, uh, in the future. Things are changing. There is a flow. Uh, and I, I really think that organizations like yours can uh, work in, uh, in these spaces, in these cracks that have been created by people who are so committed to these compelling topics. So I, I, I think that we can expect better things from the future. It is all uh, for, for today. Uh, thank you. Thanks to you and thanks to Rethinking Climate for all your initiatives and then also for, for uh, promoting this kind of, of discussion and, and debate. So thanks very much to you. You're very welcome. So uh, thanks uh, to all people who are uh, listening to us uh, at home and follow us uh, on uh, social media and our, on our channel on YouTube. Bye. Mm -hmm.